Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and today I have for you a little, um, I guess you'd call it a show and tell of the mermaid tail necklaces. So, I'm just going to explain how I make these. It's not really a tutorial because I would have to be pouring resin in order <laughs> to do it, and I just am not going to have time to do that before my craft show. Um, it's tomorrow, but, um, I do... Um, I've had a lot of people ask a lot of questions about the mermaid tails, so I thought I would go ahead and just explain how I make them um, and show them to you. So, um, they are not hard to make at all. So here's an example of one. And what you do, I have a couple of mermaid tail um, molds, resin molds. And there's a larger size and a smaller size, so here's an example. This is the larger size. This is the smaller size. Let me see if I have something that I can lay up there that will show you kind of a, well, I have a ruler, so. Um, so here's the size you're looking at. The larger one's about four inches in length. The smaller one is about probably three. Yeah, about three. So this one's an inch smaller and, you know, obviously it's thinner too. It's not as wide, but I have sold tons of both sizes. So, um, people like these really well, even adults like these really well, um, which surprised me, but yeah, there are adults that buy these for themselves too. So, but at my last craft show, I think I sold like eight of these mermaid tail necklaces. So you know, they really, and I had debated, I was like, I don't think I'm going to make any more, but when they sold so well at the last craft show, I was like, okay, I guess I probably do need to make some more, especially with Christmas coming. So anyway, I'm just going to show you a few of the colors. So this one is hot pink. And what I've done is I have the mermaid tail molds and I mix up resin and I pour, um, I take little cups from the Dollar Tree, the little tiny, um, Dixie cups from the Dollar Tree and so what I would do is I would mix the resin number one then I would take you know cups and put out so for example this one I would need yellow purple and red so this right here is colored with um, pearl X colors and the yellow is pearl X the purple is glitter so I would just fill my cups with a little bit of resin in each one and then put whatever color and whatever um, stuff I wanted um, in the cups and mix it up so it's ready. And then when I pour it in the mold, um, obviously I poured the red in there, streaked the red in there, and put the purple in. And then I let it get a little bit tacky, the resin to get a little tacky and kind of dry before I would pour the yellow in because then, you know, these will stay in their places and they won't um, blend too much with the yellow because they are, it's a little bit tacky already. So that's how I do that. And then I glue a bale to the back. Um, I do paint them with clear nail polish because it just makes them a lot shinier. I wish I had one here that wasn't painted, but I don't. I've painted all of them, but it makes them a ton shinier um, if you paint them. So I do paint them with clear nail polish when we're when I'm ready to bead them up and let that dry. Like I said, I glue a bell to the back and then I use tiger tail and these bubble gum beads. Um, a lot of these beads I got on um, Etsy and I wish I could remember. I think it was Lollipop Bead Shop, I think is the name where I got a lot of these beads. Um, but Hobby Lobby now sells them. Um, I think even Michaels is starting to sell them. They were really hard to find and really expensive and they're still really expensive um hobby lobby i think sells a big tube of them about this big for 17.99 i got a couple i got four tubes from hobby lobby um on clearance for 4.49 each so when i saw that i was like oh yeah i'm buying those because i knew that i would use them but they come in so many different like this is a crackled glass sort of one um, there's polka dotted ones, there's ones with little rhinestones in them, so, you know, they come with all sorts of different types of finishes, and, um, these are just acrylic little bicones, 
um, this color. You know, you can see these. These are really cool little beads, but um, that's what I do. I just, I bead them up with tiger tail. I use a wire guardian because these are for kids and you want to make sure that, you know, they are secure. So I use a wire guardian. I double crimp it right here. I use two crimps and I try to cover those with um, a crimp bead cover, but I don't have any more. So this one's just, you know, the people don't seem to notice, but still I like to cover them if I can. And I just use, it's better if you have a clothes jump ring, but I didn't have a clothes jump ring that was a good size, but this one is, um, it's pretty, it's, you know, I make sure they're closed up really good. I put an extender on it. I've actually just started doing the extenders and I need to go back. This is an older one that I've made. Um, there's several in here that are older and I need to go back and add extenders to them. So I may do that here today just to, you know, because it, for me, it's hard to judge a kid neck. Um, <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but, and then you get little kids and you get bigger kids and you get, like I said, adults, but yeah, I have a hard time with that. But like this one here is made with like a, um, tinsel glitter, I guess you'd call it. It's longer pieces and I poured a pink background and I did, you know, the glitter and the yellow on this one and it's got some really pretty these rhinestone beads I think are pretty um so there's that one that's those three um let's see here here's a purple and green a purple and lime green one but like I said these just they turn out so cute um, you know they just they're really adorable and people love these things I've just sold tons of them Here's another one. This one is gold and blue. I love these beads right here. Those are so cute. I try to do a variety of colors, like a bunch of different colors. And when you hang them out on the, I use a round, a thing that spins to hang these because number one, the kids can turn it. And number two, I don't price each one individually or anything like that. I just put a sign up that says mermaid tail necklaces. And I charge $10 for them, which is really not very, not enough because the resin itself is expensive and these beads are expensive but I, that's always the big dilemma I just find that people will not <clears throat> excuse me will not pay the prices that you know things are worth um I don't know I may try to up them a little bit I'm thinking 12 is probably really very reasonable for these still but like I said I don't know if I will be able to get that much out of them so, <clears throat> I really like this one. This one is um, silver, of course, blue. It's that tinsel glitter. And then gold on the tips. And it's just beaded up with some blue and gold. And I am not super strict about, like, this gold and this gold are not exactly the same. They're very similar, but... With these necklaces, they're just whimsical and they're kind of fun and you don't have to have everything matching perfectly. Now, I do like it to definitely be in the same color family or whatever, but I don't um, <clears throat> get too crazy about matching every little thing perfectly. Like these light blue, this is really more of a turquoise, but I think they looked fine on there. So, And this one is white. I love this white. Um, iridescent glitter. I think it is so pretty. White and pink. So, you know, you use these little white iridescent ones on there and those beads are really cool. Those are some of the Hobby Lobby beads, those crackly ones. So there's a white and pink one. This one's white and silver. I thought it was really cool too. So, I like these. These are so cute. <clears throat> Here's purple and lime green again. I went and poured a bunch of purple and lime green tails because I had bought these beads from Hobby Lobby and I knew that I needed to try to match colors with them. There's a green and pink and silver. So yeah, that's they're really easy to make. Like I said, you just I use the wire guardians, I use the crimp, double crimp, I pull on them, you know, to make sure they're fairly secure. I mean, if a kid pulls really hard, they are going to come undone. You just can't, even if they're double crimped. But, 
you know, I try to make sure they're fairly secure. Now, see that one I did put the crimp bead cover on because I had several <laughs> at that point. So, I did run out. This one is kind of like a um, neon yellow. It's a little bit different yellow than these. So, you can tell the difference there. Um, yeah, I just beaded it. I need to put an extender on it. So, it's purple and yellow. This one's red and silver. I don't have... I think this is the, well, maybe there's, no, this is, might be the only red one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I don't use all big bubblegum beads on these. Like, I use smaller beads. These are the little um, acrylic beads from the Dollar Tree or plastic beads or whatever they are. Um, yeah, I don't use all just bubblegum beads. Some people um, do. They use all these big beads, but I don't know. I think it's a little much for a little tiny kid to have that, all those huge beads. Now this one, maybe I haven't painted this one with this, with the clear nail polish. I'm going to because it looks kind of dark. Let's see if maybe I can show you what the difference it makes. So here it is. It looks, looks kind of dull. I think maybe I didn't get this one painted on that red one too. So yeah, I didn't forgot to paint it. <laughs> See, can you tell the difference? It just makes it so much shinier and prettier. There, look at that. How it makes the iridescent look so much shinier. Yeah, they definitely look better if you paint them with the clear nail polish. I hope you can tell the difference on the video. It really, it does make a difference in person. that's how they're made they're real simple to do and when you pour the resin I love to pour resin I think it's so much fun I'm not the best at it all the time but I really do enjoy it but these you can't really mess up and um, they're so easy because you don't have to worry about the bubbles because the color when you color the uh, resin the bubbles aren't even going to show up anyway so I don't even worry about trying to get the bubbles out I think this one's, yeah, this one's painted already. I'll try this one, though. I don't know that I... Yeah, look at the difference. <laughs> it makes a huge difference. I guess I forgot to paint these. They look way better when they're painted. I don't know why I did not remember that. But, but yeah, you don't have to worry about getting the bubbles out of the resin. Um, you can just color it and not worry about that part. They're just super easy. Look at the difference it makes on the iridescent. Can you see the stripe down the middle of where I painted it? You can. I mean, it's it makes like a huge difference on the silver and iridescent glitters. But those are the mermaid tails. They're, you know, they're really, um, they sell super good. They're probably one of my best selling things at craft shows. To be honest, I mean, number one, people will do anything for their children. <laughs> I found, I'm like, I don't know, I guess I just was a different mom. I did not, you know, if my kids came up and wanted something and I said no and they threw a fit, then they definitely weren't going to get it. <laughs> but I've seen people, you know, the kid will come up and want it and the mom's like, no, and the kid literally goes into seizures and the mom just gives in and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're just teaching that child that they, they can throw a fit and get their way. Yeah, I never did do that with my kids and I've just been amazed. But people, you know, they'll they'll do about anything for their kids. So I probably can put 12. I could probably put 13 or 14 dollars on these and get it just because. But um, these are the kind of bells. I just do these glue on bells. See, this one's got a little bit of glue on it, but this one came in the um, boss's bead bag. I got several of those. There's another one, but I just glue these. There's another type. I got that one off of Etsy. I just put these little glue on bells. I use E6000 because it will stay. And then, real quickly, I will show you. Um, I hadn't done this before, but I thought, well, I'm going to make some earrings to go with them. So, I don't know if people will even buy these earrings, being this might be way too big for a little girl. I have no idea. I had boys, so it's a little tough for me to judge, but they do look really cute with the necklace, though. 
So I just used the ball and I hung it on a fish hook. I'm, I'm out of silver fish hooks. These are stainless steel. Um, I don't have any of just the regular silver, so those, that's good because they won't tarnish or anything. But um, yeah, those may be too big for a little girl. I don't know. So I made some big ones like this. And then let me see if I have... I mean, there's several necklaces in here, obviously, that the green could match, but it looks cute with that one because it's got the matching bead. And then this is a smaller size bead. I think this is a 20, and then this is a 20 millimeter. Yeah, this is a 16, and this, I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe that's 24. I don't know. But anyway, there's different sizes. And then I made a couple. These turned out really cute, I thought, with these little, so I had several necklaces that I had used these on so it, this would go with that one and it's way smaller you know so definitely um let me get my handy dandy dime up here they definitely you know these small ones would work but I'm not sure about the big one I just don't know what to see what people buy but um some people I've noticed buy you know bigger jewelry and, and it doesn't bother them for the little girls so we'll see but some people I've had say, oh, no, that's too big on some of these necklaces. So, ah, just depends on the person, I guess. But anyway, that's the mermaid tail necklaces and uh, the little earrings that match. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it answers some of your questions. I had a lot of people ask questions. So, you know, that's how they're made. They're not hard to do. Um, they're a little time consuming because you have to let the resin set up and, and all that. But I love I think it's fun to pour the resin, so, yeah, but you guys have a great rest of the day, it is early here, it's 6.53, <laughs> and, uh, I have the show tomorrow, so I've got some stuff to get ready, and I'm gonna try to get that done here in a few minutes, and then, um, yeah, I'll get the car packed and be ready to go early in the morning, so, um, you guys have a great rest of the, the day, and I'll see you in the next video, bye!